Hey everyone, in this video we're going to talk about Spring Cloud Gateway. Now, Spring Cloud Gateway is a framework that's within the Spring ecosystem. So if we go on to Spring Initializer, you can decide whatever build tool you want. I'm choosing Maven, Java and version 3.3.4. Fill in these details as well, it doesn't really matter. The most important thing is that you have this dependency here. So make sure you get this gateway dependency and then hit generate and that'll generate your zip file. Once that's done, just go to your downloads and unzip that file. So you can see I have my gateway demo here. So I'm gonna just unzip this. And once I have that done, I'm going to drop it into this folder here. So I'm gonna go into dev, YouTube. This is just a, a Git repo that I created, so that's what that is. And I'm going to copy and paste all these in here. And I can actually, I'll keep that readme for now. And I'll copy all these, apart from the readme because I've already got one. Paste it in here. Now I can remove this. Okay, perfect. So now that we've got this, we need to open it up in some sort of IDE. So I'm going to use IntelliJ. So if I pull that open here, you can see that we should be able to run this project out of the box. It's always, it's always important to check and make sure that your project actually runs when you, when you download it, especially the way that I pulled the, the files out and pushed it into a different folder. So if I do an npn clean install, let's just make sure that it gets everything. So you can see it's doing this download for the first time. So if you haven't got any of these uh, Spring Cloud gateway dependencies, it'll take you a little bit of time as well. But it doesn't take that long. I think we're, we're nearly there. So yeah, successful build. So that's great. So the next thing we want to do is maybe create like an endpoint just to make sure that we can call this application and once we do that we'll jump into what our gateway will actually look like so if you haven't seen the previous video and you're unsure on what a gateway is and how it works i would suggest to go and take a quick look at that video but if you know exactly how it works then there's no need to right so let's jump into making our health controller so we're going to our source, our main Java, and here we can just create a new directory and we can call it health. So let's create the health controller here. So we'll create a Java class, health controller. And now that we have that, we'll add to git in a second. And we're gonna have a get mapping I'm going to do get mapping like that. And then we're going to say what our health endpoint is. So it's just going to be forward slash health, like so. And that needs to be in double quotes. So that looks good now. Let's just put method to it. Public string. And we want to go and actually just return something. It can be anything. So we'll say return, we'll say return, okay. Uh, so now that we have that, if we go and try and run this application and open it in a browser, just to make sure that it is working and we can hit it. This shouldn't take too long. It's only a pretty light application. And we can see it started up in less than two seconds. So now we need to go to our browser. So in our browser, we're going to go to localhost 8080 because that's the application uh, port that Java is running on. And we can see if we go to 8080, the default page is this. So this kind of might scare someone, but this is just a default error page. And the reason why we're seeing an error is because we have nothing for the home page. So we said that 
forward slash health should return something. Uh, and forward slash health is still not returning anything. Oh, sorry, this is actually not working because I forgot to put the rest annotation on it here. And since we've changed this code, we're going to have to stop the application and rerun it again. And it should run any second. So we can go back to the browser and just try and refresh this. And we get an OK. So perfect. That's what we want. And that's what we expect. So the next thing we can do is to go into our resources folder here. And we can make a new file. And we can call it application.yaml. And once we have that, We'll add it in a second. Um, once we have this application.yaml file, this is where we're actually going to do our routing. So we start off by saying spring, that's the main parent, and then a tab in from that is going to be cloud, and then we want gateway, and once we've got gateway, we want routes. I don't think we want MVC routes. I think it's just routes. Unless it has changed since the last time. That seems to be given an issue. So I might just I might just go with what it was. And we can change it later if we need to. So ID. This is just an ID, this can be called anything. But I'm gonna call it Google route because this is going to be a route for Google. We're going to give it a URI. This is going to be like the Google homepage. So https colon forward slash forward slash www.google.com and then we're going to put a predicate in here. And that's going to be the actual bit that we're going to add to our URL. So when we have our application run, let's say it's localhost 8080, this is what we're going to type in to our path for us to go to Google. So we're just going to say path equals, we're going to just say go. We're going to put go in for it. And we'll put two asterisks after this. We can put in filters. So we're just going to put in filters. We're just going to have our filters as strip prefix equals one. OK, let's just stop this and see if this works. I'm a little bit skeptical because we've got these, these lines. So maybe it has changed in the version that we're using 3.3.4. But let's find out. So if we go here and we're going to take away health, we're going to put in go. It seems to be coming up with nothing. So let's go and use their suggestions. So after gateway, it wanted MVC. And let's, let's add that in there. So as you can see, it doesn't have any squiggly lines, which kind of indicates that it's it looks right. The syntax looks right anyway. So let's go and stop this and rerun it and see if we see anything. Okay, so this has started. We've got the same URL. Hit enter. And you can see, look, at it's, it's working now. So I can just accept that. And it brings us to the Google homepage. So this has actually changed. It uh, must be a recent change in the in the Spring Boot version because I didn't use MVC beforehand <coughs> in my example. So that's one example. We have a Google route. But within this, we could have many more. So we could create a new ID. It's a ID and pick whatever name you want. We could say Salesforce if we're going to go to the Salesforce route. Call it Salesforce route, and that needs to be back here. And now 
where we can basically do the same thing again. We want we want all this. And we want it here, but we don't want to go to Google this time. We want to go to uh, Salesforce. Salesforce.com. And we don't want to type in go. We'll type in like SF for Salesforce. So we'll keep this filter the same. Again, stop the application, rerun it. And now let's go back here. So keep in mind if we were to clear this and go to just a forward slash, we'll get an error here. We can go to health and see an OK. We can go to GO, what we've done before. And we can also now go to SF. And that'll bring us to Salesforce. Perfect. Yeah, so you can see how this could be used in like a larger application. So I hope you've learned a little bit more about Spring Cloud Gateway and what implementation of Spring Cloud Gateway would look like. And you can add in your own services here. So this could be microservice B or this could be microservice A. You can imagine how this could be very useful in large organizations and companies even teams that want to route different requests to different services. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did let me know by subscribing or leaving a comment.